alarms flashing everywhere. Wait, beep, beep, hold the beep, phone beep, 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 before beep. this video titled Get started. We want to make a quick public service announcement to all of our viewers. Public we service we here at the Old Warlock have created our first ever supplement called the Deck of Contradiction. If you've watched some of our videos or been interacting with us, you may have heard mention of yes. this before. Our Kickstarter for the Deck of Contradiction will be getting started on February 9th. February 9th, right down here. Really big letters. We're very, very excited about this. We are. From all the interactions we've, have, we've had with you guys, we think this is going to be a supplement that you all are going to like quite a bit as well. So please, all we're asking right now is that you go check out the Kickstarter page. The, the, pre the pre-launch page. The pre-launch page. Just click the link below. Down in the description, go take a look. There's going to be a lot more of that coming soon. But again, the Kickstarter will actually be launching on February 9th. Before anything, that, that's all I've really got. And without further ado, here's the video. Bah! You know what I like to do in my spare time? Play on your Xbox. I do like to do that. You know what else I like to do? Play on your Xbox. You know what else I like to do? <laughs> no, don't. I like to play Dungeons and Dragons. We apologize to all of those of you whose ears were just blown out. You also love to play D&D. &D. I do. I know you do. I it's do. just about your favorite thing in the whole wide world. Pretty much. D&D. &D. Yeah. Role-playing games in general, but D&D &D specifically. We like it so much, in fact, that we have crafted this wonderful, let's take a moment and look around us here, this wonderful YouTube channel over the past five, six years. It's been um, a long time. It's been a really long time <laughs> that we've been putting all this and we, together. We haven't made much progress. We haven't but, made much yeah. progress, but we, we, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. It's, it's, a a, fun, it's a fun hobby. It's a fun thing to do. And we, we just love being able to talk about it with you guys. And so what we thought we would do today is we would just talk a little bit about how Dungeons and Dragons has impacted our lives as individuals. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully... This is one of those ones where we really encourage you guys to join in on this conversation because I think that people like to read about whether or not others have had similar experiences yes. to the, with the game. Yes. Uh, this And this whole subject got started several months ago. I was talking to my friend John and my friend Gene, mm -hmm. and we were having a discussion. John, Gene, hello. Hi, guys. Uh, we were having a discussion about what role... Play, what role... <laughs> see what I did there? What, what role Dungeons and Dragons had on us very early on in the formative teenage years of our lives. Yeah. And the list that we came up with just kept going and going and going. And we've meant to... You're doing that again, aren't you? You're, you're, he's mo he mocks me all the time. I don't mock you. I'm encouraging no, you. No, you're mocking. Sidelines. Mocking. But uh, the list that we came up with about those positive impacts uh, on, our, on us as, as younglings was uh, it, it was a long list and it kept going and we we've wanted to do a video on the positive impacts that Dungeons and Dragons has on people or that we believe D and D has on people. We've wanted to do that for quite some time, but we we just keep putting it off because it's it's a big topic. It is. But um, our friend over at Immersive Dungeon Delving on Instagram, um, he posted something here in January where he talked about the influence of. D and D on him. Yes, and I thought it was a. I thought it really brought things into a, a nice, clear focus. Yeah, and I, I got in touch with him and said, "Hey, I really liked your post," and he said, "Hey, oh, you know, he was he was pleased that I took the time to say something about it." And then I asked him if I could read his post on our YouTube channel to kind of get a conversation started about this topic. Yeah, and he said that would be great. So we're going to read. We're going to start with immersive dungeon delvings comment on Instagram, and then we'll go on from there. We are. But before we do that, intro sequence! Welcome back. Welcome back. Hello. So, like he said, we're going to start by just reading what he said. And thank you to Immersive Dungeon Delving for letting us use this. Letting us use this. Post. Very well said. And uh, we'll link his Instagram page down below. Right. So yeah. go click on it. Now, as far as I know, he does not have a YouTube channel. As I th also I, believe the same thing. I looked into it and he only has the Instagram. Yes. Uh, but yeah, go take a look. He's, he does a lot of things with OSR yeah. uh, and old school rules. Uh, really, an, really a great uh, series of posts that he puts up on a regular basis. So, yes. Anyway, go check it so, out. So, without further ado, this is, this is in the words of Immersive Dungeon Valley. It's a new year, so I'm going to do something that I very rarely do and write a post about me. After all, this is an account about cool games and not boring, nerdy people like myself. 
I have been a lover of the sword and sorcery, fantasy, and horror genres for as long as I can remember. When I was 12, my uncle gave me a Menser basic set of D&D, and my life was never the same again. D&D literally changed my life for the better. Playing this RPG helped me be become good at math, reading, and history in school. Because medieval fantasy RPGs touch on so many diverse subjects and themes, such as mythology, religion, wilderness survival, martial arts, even multidimensional quantum physics and esoteric spiritualism, it's not wrong, <laughs> I, developed just, a passion, it. Yeah, I developed a passion for, well, all of it. Immersing myself in the role of various characters, or the impartial dungeon master, over the years allowed me to internalize their imaginary struggles and, like the PCs, attempt to face life's problems and social situations with drive and positive ambition. Something that was difficult for a mixed-race introvert like myself to do. Over the years, I have managed to earn a couple of university degrees, multiple black belts, learn a second language, live in a foreign country, own a martial arts school, and even write a book, a delving deeper companion available on lulu.com if you're interested. I say all this not to highlight myself, but to clarify why I so love role-playing games. They can bring positive change to one's life if you let them. Today, my passion for travel and dungeon delving, both real and imaginary, are as strong as ever. Thank you all for reading my crazy long posts on nerdy subjects. May you all have a great and successful 2024. P.S. The other person in the photos is my brother, both as a kid and now. We play Delving Deeper together with our group nearly every Sunday. D&D continues to build bonds, bringing family and friends together, even when there is an ocean between them. Happy gaming, everyone. It's a lovely post. It really is. It's quite nice. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this, and like I said, it, it made me... It, it brought again mm -hmm. the idea that you know this is this game has had a huge impact on so many lives. Yes, uh, we wanted to touch on just a few of the things that Gene and I and that John and I have talked about on yeah. this subject over the years, because dungeon, um, immersive dungeon delving. He kind of he briefly touches on some of these without going into detail, which is appropriate for the post. But there is just a look, this list is huge. Hack of a lot of stuff. Um, one of the things that, that Gene and I were talking about again not too long ago was uh, Gene was uh, was awesome. not Gene. Hi. Yeah, yeah. And Gene is a real big supporter of what we're doing here yeah. today. Um, Gene had mentioned that you know, and, well, and I know for a fact because I, I, you know, Gene and I go clear back to high school. Gene mentioned the other day that uh, one of the things that D and D did for him was. Uh, allow him uh, an environment where he could try and problem solve without fear of, um, I don't know, being embarrassed or taken to task by tossing out ideas that may or may not work. Yeah. And it, I mean, D&D, &D, that's a big thing about D&D &D is that if you're playing with the right people, you do have an environment that encourages you to think creatively about problem solving. Yeah. And if you're wrong and things fail, it's not that big of a deal. So it's a great place to test your ideas about getting past a, an obstacle. Uh, that was one of the big ones. But then, uh, you know, I got to thinking about what D&D &D did for me. And, you know, we're looking at geography, you know, learning how to create maps, learning about um, geology and mm -hmm. the way that when, you, when you're making a map, you know, what do rivers do to a landscape? What do yeah. mountains do to a landscape? How do forests affect a landscape? Uh, we had mentioned in a, in a couple of videos fairly recently the, uh, the idea that early D&D &D brought many, many tales from mythology yeah. into Dungeons & Dragons, yeah. which encouraged me to go and find out more about those, those different mythos that came from different cultures around the world. Uh, it dealt with, it was creating, it was doing things like uh, making it easier for me to... Um, deal with simple more mundane tasks like yeah. planning for use of resources over time you know if you wanted to get to you know, accomplish a certain task and you had a limited number of resources you had to remember you had to learn how to allocate those resources yeah and you know it may sound like well you know it's just a game guys but if you're actually doing this kind of thing in practice in a game that's working yeah. that's working to get your thought processes to the point where you can do this in any situation mm -hmm. uh personal interaction was a huge one yeah. uh, you know being able to figure out ways to work with a group in order to accomplish a task or uh by the same token you might have had to work just yourself to accomplish a certain task mm -hmm. there is you know there, we were talking about uh things like money communicating with people who don't speak your language which happens all the Constantly. time in my campaign yeah uh figuring out ways to do that and i don't know if any of you deal with in your in your workplace if you've dealt, dealt with tabletop exercises tabletop tabletop exercises are simply when you sit down and you imagine yourself 
uh, dealing with any situation which might come up at work. Well, it's the exact same thing as Dungeons and Dragons. It's workplace D&D. It's workplace D&D, only D&D is more fun. Yeah. Um, but it's the same concept. Your mind is working over the ways that you solu find solutions to problems, and that makes it that much easier to deal with situations when you've already gone through it in your head in some form. Yeah. Um, there are, you know, taking up concepts of religion, taking up concepts of psychology, sociology. Uh, really, the list goes much, much further than we have time for yeah. in this video. It really does. I think that there are, I mean, really, there are countless ways in which one could say how D&D has impacted them in some sort of positive way. And I think that actually a great way that we've kind of talked about this subject before was uh, we made a video about a year ago now, something something like that, where we talked about the Satanic Panic mm -hmm. and how people perceived Dungeons and Dragons during the Satanic Panic, kind of how it got to be to that point in yeah. the United States and the world and the impact that that actually had on a lot of people's lives yes. and how that how it impacted their perceptions of the game their ability to play the game and it was really great after we made that video and the follow-up video where we got to hear a lot about how the game directly has influenced people's lives yeah and how other people's perception of the game has impacted their lives as well and it's it's nice to hear consistently from people of all different age groups we're not the same age, if you can't tell. The game has been around... I'm younger. Exactly. The game has been around for a long time, and it's impacted a lot of people. But over the course of these different generations of people playing the game, a lot of the impacts have been very, very similar. Right. As much as we criticize newer editions of the game, whatever it might be, it's great that this still is something that exists. The end result. People, the end result is still great, because like you right. said, it gives people confidence um, outside of just their ability to, you know, understand the way that the world works around them and think more deeply about things. I think it also has a very positive impact on a lot of people's just lives. Yes. In that they they have a new group of friends that yes. they can look for. If they're moving to a new place or if you're a kid and you're going to a new school, you now have something that you can look for and relate to people on. And a lot of times, some of the people who play this game, myself included, have struggled with some sort of social interactions over the course of their life. And so it's nice to be able to have kind of this way to both A, practice social interactions yes. with people that you're comfortable with, and B, to have something that you have in common with people. And this is a very close-knit community when you get down to it. And I'm it sure is. a lot of you guys do it know is. this. Going to conventions, going to game stores, anything like this, as soon as you go in with this interest, you've got a thousand new built-in friends well, at this convention that you can go and talk to about something you're you both find, passionate about. You find that you're among your people. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's just, I think that that is kind of it is law alongside understanding how things like geology work how politics work how all of this stuff is very very important but it's also a new someone's cutting down trees above us apparently <laughs> but it's also a great Sorry. way that you're able to socialize and make new friends and i think that that's a way that i'm sure a lot of you will agree it's had a pretty great impact uh, yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on. I think yeah. that we're going to take a closer look at this subject here in the near future. Yeah. Um, I also want to get into what people have said about the psychology of D&D &D yeah. and how yeah. there are some really interesting books out about the psychological impact that playing role-playing games has upon a person. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've kind of touched on those, but we're talking more deep, uh, deeper. We're talking deeper uh, psychological impact. Yeah. Uh, positive. And so these are things that we want to, again, go and take a look at. But... We also just want to make sure that you let us know, you know, give us a list of all the things that, yeah. that, that role-playing games have done for you, the positive impacts that they've had. And then, you know, we who knows where we may end up going with this, but we'd really like to see what it's done for you. There may be things out there that we haven't even thought of that yeah. are, where we've been impacted and we won't know it until you tell us what's happened to you. So please let us know in the comments. Because this really is a huge subject matter. So I'll almost view this maybe as kind of an introduction to some other videos yeah. that we might be making later on talking about some of the specifics. But D&D, &D, not only is it a rip snorting good time, because it is, there is no better way to spend a Saturday night. I don't care what any of you people say. <laughs> it's also a very positive thing, I think. Uh, so, yeah, let us know down yep. below what your guys' positive experiences are, or negative experiences. Just let us know what you think about the game. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Yes, you guys are fantastic. You do it with a... You guys are helping us out a great deal. Yep. Uh, please note that on February 9th, we will have our Kickstarter campaign 
uh, going live. Yep. It's for something we've created called the Deck of Contradiction, where it, it's, it's very similar, not very similar, I take that back. It is like the Deck of Many Things, but different. Yep. Uh, we think that you're going to enjoy it. Uh, in the description, you'll find a link to our pre-launch page. You will. And if you go there and you uh, either have a Kickstarter campaign or you're willing to make one, if you click on the pre-launch, you'll alert me uh, off of the pre-launch page, you'll be alerted when the Kickstarter campaign goes live. Yep. comes with a deck. It comes with explanations. It comes with a lot of lore that's out of my campaign of 40 odd years. Hopefully it's uh, something that you'll enjoy. comes with a bag. <laughs> comes with a bag and a box. Yep. So. It's but five anyway, great things just for you. Yeah, there, there you go. So have a look at that. See if it's something you're interested in. Um, if not, we're just glad you're here regardless. So, yes. Um, that's I, all I've got. That's all I got too. I'm Jim. I'm Alex. Keep your sword on pretty. Au revoir.